Hello, good afternoon and welcome to the final round of the National Championships of Australia. Here at Werribee Park, it's a splendid afternoon in a magnificent arena here, 110 by 90 metres. And you can see in the distance there, course builders labouring away, pots and plants and the start and magic eyes for the start and the finish and electronic timing, little rustic gates and poles all being carried to various spots. And uh, it's a very skilled and exacting job. And we welcome Franz Madl from here, from Austria today. And he's the course designer. He's done an outstanding job over the last three or four days. And we're now going to start walking the course for the Grand Prix. Very, very important competition. Very big competition. Very big fences. Big prize money. And not only that, of course, there's the actual, the actual title. The senior Australian national show jumping champion. And these riders, when they come in, they'll be under a lot of pressure. Uh, there's a strict time allowed to be kept to. If they go over that time allowed, they're in trouble. But they've got to keep their horses rideable. And here they come, up to the first fence. No messing about here. It's already a metre 40 by a metre 45. It's quite a big first fence. It's a metre 60 wide. It's a very demanding obstacle before we even start. And don't forget these horses, as their time allowed, have got to be going at about 24 kilometres an hour just to make the time allowed. Uh, that's 400 metres a minute. So nearly seven metres a second. And now we're in the first. Of course, Builder's got into them straight away. He's got a related distance straight down this line of all the people and the spectators in the trade stands on my right here. And now we'll go walk in multiples of four, which is one horse stride down to fence two. See what distance he's set. And here we go. There's seven or eight strides down there for these riders. Now don't forget if they add a stride, they're in serious trouble of, or serious danger of getting a time fault. So they'll want to come down there on the committed number that the course designer set. And here the second fence, it's one metre fifty vertical. So he's opened them out with the first fence over a wide spread. And now they have to come back and be quite exacting over the vertical. So they jump the second fence. They're well into their course now and they're going down towards home. The big floral arch on my right is the entrance and exit where they come in and out. So they'll be thinking of that as home. So I've ridden towards that. And now we have to turn away. I have here, I keep looking to the course plan. There's a course plan in the judges box. It has all the information on it for the riders. And then not only that, the competitors have a copy of the course plan with all the information on it in the collecting ring. And here, of course, we're coming up now to the third fence. There you see it, the Southern Sport horses. Horses will be making their turn somewhere inside where I am now and up to this fence. It's quite a tall fence, another one metre fifty plus vertical probably around the 152, 153 mark, which is quite high considering you've got nearly 600 kilos of horse traveling at 24 kilometers an hour between your legs and then you ask it to leave the ground and clear something like this. And you can see I'm a full six foot three and this is up to my shoulders. Quite a big vertical indeed for the third fence. But it's what we expect for a Grand Prix, especially one carrying a national title. And of course now here, he started to ask more of the riders. They jump out over that at 400 meters a minute. And then very, very soon afterwards have to make this right turn towards a fantastic fence, a very nice wide open triple bar. And this triple bar here, probably well over 150, two meters wide. Totally different type of fence again, as the others have been more square. This is an ascending spread that just goes away from you. And as I say, two meters wide is a very demanding obstacle indeed. And a beautiful fence to ride to. But it also has its problems. You know, it's the type of fence that opens the horse out. And we don't want these horses too long, too opened out, because they have to come back on what we call their hocks and be rideable and controllable enough. And the riders have to be accurate enough to come and jump this rather unusual little oxer. Now, we call them oxers. 
they used to be called parallels or spread fences, but they call them oxes because it comes from the old fashioned English terminology when after the agricultural revolution they had the term the act of enclosure and the land was all split up and they used to put a couple of, hedge, a couple of fences up with a quick growing hedge down the middle and that made it an ox proof fence and the ox couldn't eat the, eat the hedge and so it became in the hunting field jumping the ox proof fence and now we call it just the oxer so there's a bit of history for you fence five quite high but very narrow just because it's narrow doesn't mean it doesn't count you know it's still just as difficult to ride you have to jump that front rail now we make another left turn so we've gone left rein right rein left rein and our left rein again deep into the corner but not too deep because it's 400 meters a minute we don't want a time fault so riders are going turning somewhere where i am now they've got to keep their eye on their fence into quite demanding line and here it is 6ab this blue double beautiful looking fence but a big one 150 in looks like one stride in the middle we anticipate you see 150 horses probably landing about here and then we take one two three Four, and we should have our takeoff spot here and jump out over this oxa. But look at the width of this oxa. Hmm? You can see the course builders walking up and down inside it. It's that wide. Beautiful looking fence, very big fence. Now, here we go from here, straight down to our water jump. Be interesting to ask our course designer here how many strides he anticipates from this oxa to the water but he's very busy at the moment. We'll come back to him. Six, huh? let's go. This related distance, absolutely committed now, down to the water. Probably about 13 or 14 feet, and typical at this part of the world down here at Werribee, although a lovely sunny day, wind's taken some of the obstacles with it. So there, we have the water jump. We'll focus on that when we finish and they've rebuilt it. Now horses have to jump long, wide but in order to do that they also have to jump very high to get the width and then they land short instead of landing out here on a normal fence they'd land somewhere where i'm standing mm. the water jump judge the water jump judge will be standing on one side and he'll be keeping a close eye on that little white lath there that's what we call a lath and that lath will actually determine whether a horse has got four faults or not by whether he puts a foot on it so let's go down He's really opened them out there. And we come on down to a very tall vertical after the water. Always a hard jump to negotiate because you'll find horses will be moving on down, very long open stride after the water, pretty high speed. The riders will be struggling to get their horses back and they face up to this quite tall vertical. About 155, biggish fence straight after the water. They'll be thinking now, they're three quarters of the way round. Got to keep the 400 meters a minute up. Can't be too fast and too flat and too long. I've got to keep my horse balanced and rhythm and in rhythm. But at the same time, I don't want a time fault. So they'll come out after that vertical, riding through the bend, looking up now to the next fence. Can't afford to go too deep. Don't forget that time clock, ticking away, ticking away all the time. Mm, we've got a long rollback turn here to number nine. You'd think this would be a little place where they'd have a little bit of a let up, but not at all. This is a very, very serious part of the course. We've had some big fences, we've had some water jumps, we've had some varied fences, but now we come into this very demanding line here, and this is a demanding line. Uh, they come out of this bend, eyes up, very open, gappy two poles, but look at the filler underneath. This desert scene with the cacti here and the, and the rising or setting sun, quite something to look at, quite a gappy fence, probably about a meter 55 with a related distance up to this combination. Very difficult line to negotiate. And we're coming up here now. Let's think we land about here somewhere. Well, seven's got me to here. 
Well, they're about six, seven strides into this. Again, bigish oxer, probably 145.50 in front, about 152 on the back. But look at the width of it here. Uh, just to give you some idea, I'll hold my hands out for you. Look at the width, I can't even... My full body and an elbow. Huh? Very wide fence indeed. Jump in, one stride, vertical fence from the oxer. Now you're right in the middle of it. Two strides here to the oxer coming out. Again, nice big wide fence. Uh, look at the size of that coming out there. A very demanding line, a very difficult line. Uh, they've got a vertical related distance, so they've got to be committed. Oxer vertical, oxer out. So the pressure builds all the time, further and further into the course. We now have to go deep into the corner, but not too deep. Keeping your eyes focused, looking back on ourselves now. Defence 11. Huh? We've got a very tall vertical set at an angle, falling away from you. Plenty of inside leg to outside rain here. Keep them sharp, keep them back on their hocks. Huh? Moving up all the time and dare your horse to go and jump that clean. You can't do it all for them. The horse has got to meet you halfway. You see these poles here, all to the international standard, probably round about the 14 or 15 kilo mark. On those little plastic cups, there they are. You see how easily they roll. Another interesting thing I'll show you over here is the modern safety cup which breaks away. So they jump fence 11, that tall vertical. Rolling on down now, you've got a tired horse. This is where all the good jockeys come to their peak because they can pick a tired horse up and get the best out of him just as they can in racing. Now, we finish on another related distance, 12 and 13, two big oxes, two big widespread fences. And if you look here, here's the modern Here's the modern safety cup, and if you look here, you can just see how that fits in there. And then with a the pressure of about 120 kilos, that cup will break away from this little furrow underneath here. And then, and then with that, and that's a modern day safety cup, so these horses don't hurt themselves. Hmm? They land on that with 120 kilos pressure. Sounds a lot of pressure, but don't forget you've got 600 kilos doing 24 k's an hour. So uh, they don't take a lot to uh, break away, which is of course what they're designed to do. Well, now we come to the last, and there's many a person suffered at the hands of the first fence and the last fence. So they've got to keep focused right to the end, get through the electronic timing heads behind you, which you can see it mark the finish and hopefully without a time fault, and hopefully with a clear round. But over there, it's a very demanding course. He's used the entire arena, this great big arena. It's quite a pleasure to look at. Beautiful surroundings in here in Werribee Park, all the trees, all the canvas and the tents all around. The people come from miles. There's people here from Queensland, people here from WA, people from all over the country. And so therefore, we're looking forward to a fantastic competition over what I said is a very large track, very demanding track, and I don't envisage many clear rounds today. And whoever wins this class today has certainly earned their money, and it'll be a very meritorious round indeed. So I wish all the riders the best of luck. Thank you.